Super Bowl 56. The Rams win 23 to 20 over the Cincinnati Bengals. And Chris, this was I mean, we we fully expected this to be a tight game. I think I said on the show on Friday that this felt like a field goal game. All of the Bengals games have been field goal games. The Rams have played sloppy. And, oh, by the way, another deflected interception for the Bengals in the second half there, <laughs> so which got them in position to go up by a full touchdown. Uh, this was interesting. I, I cannot believe that the Rams were able to win a Super Bowl not being able to run the football, and yet they continuously tried to do it. And I understand the philosophy behind it. you got to make them respect the run, etc. But they were running Cam Akers into a brick wall over and over and over again. They did it against the 49ers. They did it against the Bucks. Like They've done this time and time again, and they were able to get nothing going on the ground, and yet they just continued to do it. It, it, it blew my mind. Uh, what were your takes from... Super Bowl 56. Uh, good game. Went very much like I thought it was going to go. I mean, not not a whole lot surprised me in this game. Um, you know, I thought it would be a tight game. I thought it would be a low-scoring game. Um, and, uh, you know, I hated to see Odell go out. But, uh, you know, that it is what it is. I don't – you know, a lot of people are making a monster deal of that, thinking that completely changed the game. That's the only reason the Bengals got back in it. You know, that's just not – you, that, that tells me you you didn't watch a single playoff game with the Bengals. Like, they always start off slow in the first half compared to the second half. That's that's every playoff game they played in. Um, and, and, and they make adjustments at halftime better than their opponents do. And, and, and this is just how they've kind of began to play football. Uh, so, yeah, no, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was a game. I did not, I did not enjoy or appreciate. Here's the thing. I thought the officiating was very, very good for most of the game. Like, they let them play, all right? Yes. They didn't get involved. They weren't going to be the outcome. Like, there was a um, – Jalen Ramsey, the play in the end zone for the – after after DeVar Chase's big catch in yes. the first half, okay? He um, – they get stopped there. There is a pass right over the middle and uh, to, to Higgins. And Ramsey breaks it up. In that, you clearly see Ramsey pulling the shirt of Higgins. And I said to the people that I watched the game with, I'm okay with that not call as long as it stays that the rest of the game. I don't want the referees to pick the winner. That's all I want. In this game, I want a good, clean game. And if somebody wins, they win. If somebody loses, they lose. And yeah. they stayed out of the game for the entire game. Until, now, now the, the missed call, you could say, oh, what, you can't just not just say it. Like, the missed call in the Higgins play uh, for the touchdown. Like, But everybody wants to say, oh, well, you take that touchdown off the board. Hey, here's the problem. You can't just take the touchdown off the board. That's not fourth down. Like, like that doesn't, like, they still have the ball. They still have other, you know, other things that they get to do before the game is over. Um, and that's early in the third quarter. Yes. When they Earlier, got involved. I mean, it's the first play. Yeah, it was the first play of the third quarter. That's exactly right. When they decided to get involved was when they started calling picky tack fouls with almost no time left to go in the Rams in the red zone. That tells me they're picking the winner. They are determining the outcome of that game. Now, that would have been third down. So that tells me the Rams would have had one more play to get a touchdown or not. And if they get the touchdown, they probably win. If they don't get the touchdown, they definitely lose. Okay? Instead, you call a foul. Then you call another foul, which the second foul was bullshit. Here's it was just penalty after penalty after penalty. I mean, the whole but, thing. But hang that, on now. The, the one where they threw both. Yeah, no, the go The one ahead. where they threw both flags. The one where they threw both flags on um, uh, uh, the hit on uh, first the holding for the, for the Rams and then the hit on uh, Coop, uh, Cooper Cup. That's a bullshit foul. He didn't leave with his helmet. He hit him hard. You say, oh, we hit him in the head. Cooper Cup was seven feet in the air, falling down. He's aiming at a, at a part in his midsection, and by the time he hits him, Cup had fallen to where he hits his chest and his chin. Okay? Well, that can't. you can't call that in the Super Bowl, giving them yet another opportunity to get out of trouble. Yes. 
Yes, I agree. I, I, so looking, that's my only flaw in it. I hate it. Was just it was just a, a disgusting ending to it. And I know that Joe had an opportunity to win it, and that's fine. That doesn't absolve. They shouldn't have to. They should have had to make one more stop. You make a team. You give a team nine opportunities in the red zone. I'll shut up after this. You give a team nine opportunities in the red zone, and they're an NFL team. They could be one of the worst. You give the Jaguars nine opportunities in the red zone. Guess what? They're going to score on one of them. Okay. Yes, that, you're 100 percent right. Uh, looking at the play by play here, uh, they did not call a penalty on that entire drive until they got to. Let's see. Until there was one minute and 44 seconds left in the game. Right, they waited all the way up until the end of it, and so the penalty was called defensive holding on third and goal from the eight. But that play should have never happened. If you go back and look, because I saw it and I said, "How was that not a false start? Like, what? What yep. am I missing?" Because yep. I, I thought maybe my eyes were playing tricks on me, and and when they started calling all these fouls and all this kind of mess, I I rewound it with the guys and that I was all watching. All the with. fouls went one way. It's not that they just started calling all these fouls. <laughs> All the fouls, like this, and you would think I'm the biggest Cincinnati homer in the world. Like, I'm not. I worship Joe, and I yeah. want to see Joe get his ring. But at the end of the day, right is right, and wrong is wrong. Yes, when, I you agree. You call a penalty the entire game, and then you call seven in, in, in a minute and a half, all for the same team, and most of them all, not most of them, all pretty damn ticky tack. It, 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 it raises, it raises the, the, the level of question. Yes, you picked yes, the winner, right. by the way. They, you dictated the winner, not the men on the field. I don't know. I'm not saying that Cooper Cup couldn't have got open on that fourth down play and they don't score the touchdown. I don't. I don't know that that doesn't happen. I know what does happen because of that. About nine to twelve seconds more goes off the clock. You know, so so that changes where when Cincinnati gets the ball back if they give up the touchdown on that fourth down drive. You know, it's about twenty second difference. So yeah, all these things matter, and it's they definitely all went the Rams way. Right, it, the whole thing was strange. Uh, let's let's not forget, of course, uh, the Bengals have the ball. I was a little confused about this third and one on the like almost at midfield, third yep. down and one, and you hand the ball off to Samaj P. Ryan. P. Ryan, oh my god! And and I can't so, figure out what happened there because Samaj P. Ryan had two carries in the entire ball game. Like, why would yeah. you not run Joe Mixon? Like, did I miss an injury? No, no, no. Mixon played fine, and Mixon, Mixon was in the game, and, and, and you know, all the way up to the very end. No, you didn't miss an injury. Listen, their play calling in certain spots of the game was atrocious. Joe made one bad throw the whole game. That's it. That's the list. And for them to have so few points with that, it's just play calling. The fourth down play call early in the game where they lost it, the first drive, uh, yep. the, their first drive, the second drive of the game, um, was was a was an absolute pitiful play call. You cannot on fourth and one, fourth and two. You cannot call just a shotgun pass. You just can't. <laughs> you have to have a run option, or you have to run the football there. Okay, you you have to have more options than me standing in this pocket with the worst offensive line in the league. And and if I make if I complete this pass, we we get it. If I don't, we we don't. And and they did that not once but twice in crucial situations, one, to end the game, by the way. The play call you're bringing up, the third down, why on earth you're not throwing it there and then you save the run play for the for the third down call? I don't know. I, I thought I thought Zach Taylor's play call that was pretty bad. I, I know he just took a team to a Super Bowl. I understand all that. Who was it a couple of years ago that took a team to a Super Bowl and still got fired? Um, they didn't win a Super Bowl. Somebody got fired after taking a team to Super Bowl because the ownership realized this ain't the guy. Like, this ain't the guy. Uh, I don't remember. Maybe uh, it wasn't after one year. Maybe it was after two. I don't remember. It might have been like the was. next year. Yeah. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was, it was Mike Malarkey making the playoffs with the Titans. And everyone said, well, we didn't make the playoffs. Uh, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. They, he's going to get. That's right. They fired him after, uh, after a win in the playoffs. That's like, right. After a playoff win. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, no, no, it, I, I still I thought the play calling was was just abysmal, just abysmal. It but, was it was crazy. Uh, Cooper Cup had uh, you know huge night, of course, two touchdowns, ninety two yards receiving, and uh, I mean he, he got every accolade. Like the only other receiver to get all of the different things that he has gotten apparently in their career 
was Jerry Rice, and Cooper Cup did all of them this season. Like Super Bowl MVP, offensive MVP. Um, he got uh, what was it the uh, the triple crown for receiving and what? I mean, it's just uh, absolutely okay. absurd. Uh, like, all right, we need to we need to stop with this language of the triple crown. Right, we just have to stop with it. You're comparing <laughs> it to something in baseball, and baseball and, ba- and football are so different. You can't even compare. The reason the triple crown was born in baseball is because there are power hitters and there are guys who hit for average. Okay, they're not the same. Power hitters never hit for average. So if you ever win the triple crown in baseball, you are an absolute god. But yes. you're telling me that it is a it is a crazy reaction that the guy that led the league in receptions and yards, which is usually those two stats go in and in all the time, also led the league in touchdowns? Like, come on, man. <laughs> those two things, those three things are all correlated together. Hitting for power and hitting for average aren't correlated at all in baseball. That's why it's a big deal if you do it. Yes. Yes. Oh, you, yeah. You're not you wrong about this. You also have to either get runs scored or uh, 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 lead the league in RBIs, which means you're depending on your teammates to get on base. So, all those things, we got to stop with that language. The triple crown. He was a great receiver. He's the best receiver of the year. He's one of the best receivers this year that we've ever seen. That should be enough. Let's not create language that says something that is not really saying. Agreed. Agreed. I can roll with that. Uh, regardless, he's had a monster year. Uh, ended Mon- with a Super Bowl MVP. I, I don't... I know that he's fantastic. I get that. I know that he's the most talented receiver in the league, etc. It just blows my mind that you know that that's the guy, and you can't cover him. And it, I don't know that anybody in the league can actually cover him. He does it just time and time again. So eight eight receptions for 92 yards and two touchdowns. He was awesome. Absolutely awesome. On the other side, uh, Matt Stafford... Still kind of the same Matt Stafford. All of this talk about uh, Matt Stafford is now a Hall of Famer, etc. I think I kind of side with Richard Sherman. Like, I might need to see some more because I don't think that Stafford was what won them the Super Bowl. I think him combined with everything else that they had won the Super Bowl. And yes, there's been a lot of quarterbacks like that. But is Matt Stafford a, a Hall of Fame quarterback to you? No, no. And the reason why is because he didn't earn that ring. I know he won the ring. He didn't earn that ring. He had to leave a – I understand that he was playing in a wasteland in Detroit. He had to leave there and go to a super team, all right? That team is made up of of Ramsey – sorry, of, of – Al. Uh, wow. Oh, my God. My brain just went dead. I'm just naming all these other guys. Cooper <laughs> Cup, who is a homegrown guy, and um, Aaron Donald, who is a homegrown guy. And everybody else has been there for five minutes, and they're all mercenaries. Okay, yeah. all right. That that's what that team's made of. He went and joined the super team and won a championship. So does that mean he, he gets to go into the Super Bowl because uh, to the Hall of Fame because of that? No, I, I do not think so at all. Um, I, you know, I, I got into the argument with somebody before the game about uh, you know they were saying, hey, I, you know, I don't I don't care anything about either of these teams. I said, well, so who are you pulling for? They're like, well, I'm pulling for the Rams because Stafford has paid his dues and Joe will get back. Like, or Joe will get his later kind of thing. <laughs> and I said, whoa, 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 whoa. So, paid his dues. I've heard too many people on TV last week talk about he paid his dues. You know what? This is football. This is competition. This ain't rich boy country club. You pay your dues, you get in. Okay? You got to earn your way in through greatness. Well, his earning his way in was going to a super team. Because tonight, uh, uh, Sunday night, in that game, let me tell you, that first half, no. Nope. Look at his receptions. Look at his completion. They were all to guys who were wide ass open, four or five yards. And as soon as Odell goes out, they stop playing that bullshit zone they were playing that wasn't covering anybody, yep. and they go to man. And his completions went to the floor. He couldn't do anything. He couldn't throw. A guy open, he couldn't hit anybody who was open but slightly covered. He ended up with two interceptions, probably should have been three. Like, I, I just think he's not the reason, and he's also the reason you almost lost that game, by the way. If you don't get the help from the strikes, Aaron Donald doesn't get his ring. Cooper yes. Cup doesn't get his ring. Sean McVay doesn't get his ring because the trigger man you got 
ain't that great. Let's uh let's talk about Aaron Donald right quick. There was news obviously before the Super Bowl. Rodney Harrison came out and said, you know, he had kind of heard some things that people had been mentioning to him that Aaron Donald might just hang it up if he wins the ring. Like that's what he has wanted. He's played for what eight seasons now, or he's been uh he's been an All Pro or Pro Bowler eight times, All Pro seven times, whatever it was, whatever the numbers are. He's just been a monster, uh, three time yep. defensive MVP. Like he's he's been unbelievable, and he proved to be again last night. What I'm curious about is, are any of these rumors substantiated through? Uh, actually, Aaron Donald. I mean, they asked him about it last night. He was like, I'm going to take some time to think about it. It kind of felt like it. But why? He's only 30 years old. Why would he retire at this point? Like, this is a Megatron I mean, kind Pat- of thing, but Megatron was for the Lions. Well, like, you know. Well, no, I mean, Patrick Willis hung it up early. And, and you know, now he's coming up for Hall of Fame. And there's a lot of Ole Miss fans and a lot of 49er fans that are saying, hey, is he going to make the Hall of Fame? And, like, I think he's got a borderline career because he he played such a short thing. Now, I think Donald has played long enough and played at a level to yes. where I, I think if he hangs it up, he still gets the gold jacket. I do think he was that good that long. Um, and, and, and he's got everything you need to, 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 to back that up. Um, I have no idea, man. I'm I, You know, we're not journalists. We're talking heads. And, you know, we don't have any inside information or scoop like that anybody else has got. So I, I I don't know. Should he hang up? Man, do whatever makes you happy. That's what I've always listen. But the only thing I I believe is if you are gonna get out, you get out. And if you're gonna be in, you got to be all in. I just don't think you can half ass this stuff. I don't. Yeah, you you either retire and don't play again and don't even toy with the idea of playing again, or you come back and you keep playing for that contract. Like yeah. <laughs> But because, at this point, because he's good, you know, he's good enough to where he can he can do anything he wants, man. He okay. really can. He's, he's really that good. He is unfreaking real. Uh, had so the the Rams had seven sacks last night. Uh, cost the yep. Bengals forty three yards. Uh, looking at the total yardage between the two teams, you know, at both both teams thirteen drives had three hundred and thirteen yards for the Rams, three hundred and five for the Bengals. Uh, the Rams ran five more plays, sixty-six to sixty-one. It was uh, at that offensive line. Uh, whenever, whenever the Bengals dropped back to pass, there was yeah. just nothing. There was nothing they could do. <laughs> it was so nope. unbelievable. And the fact that this game was even close uh, goes to show you exactly how sloppy the Rams played and have been playing this entire postseason. Uh, but this was—I mean—it was an entertaining game. Right, this is what we wanted out of a Super Bowl. You got two four seeds coming in that you know some people expected the Rams to be there, but nobody expected the Bengals to be there, and it was fascinating. Uh, do you have any other notes on it that uh, that you wanted to drop out? Um, I, I, I all I know is Cincinnati should be proud. They really should be proud. Uh, everybody gets home. They should be celebrated. Uh, Eli Apple. Get on the first boat smoking out of that fucking town. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I don't think there's a single wide receiver in the league that actually likes him. Like, well, wide receivers shouldn't like him. There's probably not a single wide receiver that likes Jalen Ramsey. That guy's a prick. But true, he, like he's at least got talent. How Eli keeps getting work is beyond me. I mean, that guy's bounced around to more teams than I've ever seen, and he's been trash at all of them. But somebody keeps picking him up. I, it's, and it's I don't know. Absurd. I don't understand why. It, it, this is it that is Ohio State effect that is killing people oh, right it's, now. It's just nuts. Oh, you went to the U? Yeah. Or, or, or to the Ohio State? <laughs> Sorry. Both of you like the, 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 the word the, which is weird for <laughs> academic institutions, but okay. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.